Nailing the rhythm section in a tech death mix is so crucial to the overall vibe and glue of the song. In this clip, Frederick details how he does just that with minimal processing. Check it out and enjoy. And uh, I can tell you the guitar tone, it's an Engel Savage 120 Mark II. White, brand new, first one ever made in that color. It was shipped to me as Obscura have a close collaboration with Engel. And it's become one of my favorite amps actually. Take a listen. So what I've done here, I have an EQ on here for the guitars where I push up 250 to get some bottom to it. And then I take down around 400, maybe just 2 dB. And I go up here 3 dB with 3K approximately. And I put up around 5K here. That should be like 5, 6 dB. This mid here, I try to like open it up a lot. So it, you don't get specific frequency, it gets stronger, you just get like, this um, presence. So it's, I, this is something I have done for a long, long time. I'm compressing multiband compression. It can be also like a sidechain compressor, but I use this one here to take away bass. For example, when... Let's see if here is it right. Just a little bit to keep the bass on the guitar in control. And you normally can see on the guitar track where the bass is because you see the peaks are like higher here. The bass get more energy. And then I have used this finish plugin here, Sooth, which is really good to... A little bit. So together without this EQ, compression and Sooth, the guitar sound like this. So I'm kind of compensating because you get a pretty nasty mid-range when you go on like this. So that's then the so tooth stands in and take away a little bit of that that I added. It's kind of multiband compression here also again. I normally have different approach to the guitars this time I think I tried to have a different approach on like the whole mix actually can we hear the multi-band on and off on the rhythm guitars so they can hear it I think, I think you're not going to hear so much but we can try it, see if you hear it. Here, there is a little bit more control, you know, it gets to like boom, boom. I started to do this many years ago with the Uray 1122, where I compressed only the bass on the guitar, because back in the 90s, there was so scooped, like, death metal guitars. So, like, the mid-range on the amp was on zero, more or less. And then, you know, the Marshall cabinets, they are not heavily built, so they were like, starting to go like boom, 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 like that. So I started to compress the guitars while recording, to get rid of this hummy bass. I still do it for some reason, but here is just a little bit, just like 1-2 dB. Not too much. So you have the fastest attack and release on that low band, um, yeah. so yeah. make it a limiter. What is the... Um... So I'm, I'm a fast and attack and releaser guy. <laughs> I've noticed the trend. Um, what is your crossover set at on that? Uh, oh, let's see here. I'm around 200. And how many dB of... Re uh, is there a, uh, a ratio on that? I never use this plugin, so I'm trying to look at a very small version of it on my screen. <laughs> I, I haven't I haven't found one, to be honest, but it works well. <laughs> okay, um, excellent. Okay, thank you so much. Um, no well, that's very clear. Uh, are we able to hear maybe the rhythm guitars in the bass soloed together and then maybe yeah. the rhythm guitars, the bass and the drums so they can kind of hear the different interactions between them? Uh, 
very neoclassical part there. And now drums. Okay, I have another question here. Um, why yep. do you use the multiband compressor in stereo instead of multi-mono? Uh, because I, I do. <laughs> no, but it's... <laughs> yeah, but it could be maybe possible I like, have the, like a, a multiband compression in, uh, in, uh, in mono also on each separate track, absolutely. But as it's, it's just like 2 dB, it's not like, it's not much. It's, it's not a game changer. Yeah, I don't think you're going to gain any width. I mean, width usually comes from top end frequencies. So he's probably wondering because usually dual mono sounds wider. But since we're compressing low end, it's probably not going to add too much of a difference in the terms of size individually compressing those, especially given how tight the guitars are recorded. OK, next question here from Matthias is, is guitar squeeze, buzz and pick noise just a matter of recording or can I deal with it at the mixing stage? Can you take that question again, please? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what I think he means is, you know, when you get a lot of like guitar buzz and squeaks from the instrument, is it best to get that out in the recording? You know, for example, sometimes like certain guitar strings might be really new and you might move your hand up and you might get a little bit of a slide sound. So I guess what he's asking is, can you take that stuff out in mixing at all? Do you have any advice for that? I absolutely aim for recording, I should say. I had a Canadian producer in my studio one time and he said, why do stuff later when you can do it now? And that's it's something that stays with me in the studio. If there is stuff we don't want to have on the recording, we don't record it. And the noise in between takes and so on, that you have to like cut out, it's like we have done here. And I also done like small, as you can see on the track here, like for this part here, I lower the rhythm guitars a little bit, just by clip gain in, in Pro Tools to get this leads up in volume. That's very, oh, sorry. I was going to say, sometimes that's a lot faster than actually writing an automation with yes. um, a line or even a fader. You can just click and drag. Yes, I think so. And here we did uh, took it down also just to bring up the lead guitar. That's an old trick that you do. It's just like you take down the rhythm guitar while the solo is because for some reason, 99.99% of the guitar players that play solos always want to be louder than le the lead vocals so they can hear <laughs> all the that they're doing. Yeah, but during 30 years, even more of recording and mixing one time and this was two years ago where a band asked me to lower the solo guitar that's the first time that's otherwise incredible yeah otherwise it's oh we cannot hear the lead guitars oh the solo should be louder this is so typical what kind of band turns the lead guitar down that's just like shocking i i, I mean i've never heard anyone ever say that usually it's like if i can't hear only myself solo mute the whole band <laughs> so. yeah <laughs> um, okay, one more quick guitar question they have here before you move on to like the lead stuff. Do you have a particular guitar for tech death, uh, a guitar and bass for recording that you might recommend? Guitar. You know, when it's coming to all kind of metal, I'm a big fan of the EMGs. I'm yeah. trying out this Fisher. They say this should be awesome, but we had to tweak the guitar tone much more than instead of just using that 81 EMG. It's just a classic pickup for all kind of metal music actually i know exactly what you're talking about i have a bunch of guitars in here and you know i always go back to an 81 for some reason and heavy music it just works regardless of the genre so is there any specific model of guitar that you might recommend that you've had over the years that records really well and same goes with bass uh, if you go for the bass the warwick bass is normally a very good sounding bass uh i think like the high range ibanez basses also have that kind of stuff i'm a guy of i like track i call it tractor bass it's just like the distortion in the bass should be in the bass tone there is another Finnish company that manufacture uh, some pedals. And I think with them, it's easy to get the distortion of the bass on top of the bass, which I don't like at all. But that's my taste. So that's, you know, the Warwick, high range Ibanez, even some low range Ibanez basses sounds what I think really good. If the guitar is too light, it's, I don't think it's good for tuning. If you want to go down in tuning. So you need some kind of 
you know, weight in the guitar. Maybe not a Les Paul, but a flying Wii, for example, is pretty easy to sit when you sit recording because you put the Wii in between your legs, and that's easy when you sit down and record. But not special, yep. any special brand for guitars.